Let's take a strong neodymium magnet and a few steel balls and put them one after another on a non-magnetic rail. Now let us move another ball close to the magnet and let it go. The outermost ball at the other end of the chain bounces off with unexpectedly high speed. If we put a massive target in its way, it will turn it over. Our task is to explain this phenomenon. Physicists always start explaining phenomena with the most basic examples and experiments. Let's remove the magnet and take two balls. We'll make one of them motionless and push the other one towards it. If we push the ball sharply for it to slide and not to roll, like it's done in billiards, it will give away almost all its energy to the motionless ball at the moment of the strike and stop. This is the manifestation of the energy and momentum conservation laws. Let us now put several identical balls in a row. If one more ball strikes this chain, only the uttermost ball will bounce off. The next one may move slowly and the rest of the balls don't move at all. We can assume that this collision relays in sequence along the chain. The first ball exchanges speed with the second one, the second with the third one, and so on. It's similar to the way carriages give a push to each other when the train starts. A toy known as Newton's cradle functions according to this principle. Newton neither slept in such a cradle nor invented it. But since its movement is governed by Newton's laws, just like any other movement in the world, there's a good reason to call it this way. Let us come back to the accelerator. What's the main trick here? If we put one ball behind the magnet, it's not going to bounce off after the strike, because in this case, both balls are attracted to the magnet with equal force. But when there are two balls behind the magnet, the second one will bounce off with considerable speed after the strike. All the more so if there are three or four balls behind the magnet. The thing is that the approaching ball is attracted to the magnet with much greater force than the bouncing one. The rear ball gets a push along the chain and the magnet doesn't hold it, so it shoots off at a high speed. To illustrate how quickly the attraction force between the ball and the magnet changes, we have clamped them into wooden mandrels. We pull the mandrel with the ball using a force sensor. The pull-off force is 36 newtons. It is the value of the force which attracts the ball to the magnet. Let us put a 0.7 mm gasket between the magnet and the ball and pull at the sensor. The pull-off force has decreased to 28 newtons. Making the gasket thicker with every round, we find how the attraction force depends on the gap widths. It can be seen that this force is decreasing very rapidly. That is why the ball acquires its speed literally at the last few millimeters whilst approaching the magnet. Let's have a look at this motion having filmed it by a speed camera. It's curious what the speed of the bouncing ball may be. To find this out, we have placed two photo gates along its way 10 cm away from each other. A computer will time the ball in motion between the first and the second gate and then calculate the speed value of the ball. Here we go. The ball's speed value turns out to be 2.8 meters per second. To get a greater speed, we have to use more powerful magnets, putting them in several rows one after another.